Aha. Welcome back. When Jonathan Bates went to his doctors complaining of a cough, he had no idea it was the first symptom of a rare condition which would leave him paralysed and very close to death. Yeah, within 24 hours, Jonathan went from being a healthy 35-year-old to being on a life support machine. He had contracted Guillain-Barre syndrome, and Jonathan joins us today along with his wife, Caroline, and our own Dr Chris. Welcome. Jonathan, Hi. this is uh, two and a half years ago. That's right, yeah. Um, and, you know, you're fit, athletic, you enjoyed mm -hmm. football and mm -hmm. running and mm -hmm. didn't smoke, yep. drank a little. Very, yeah, yeah, not much. Happily married, yes. two children, <laughs> yes. um, a good job working at home, freelance, yes. everything, yes. everything good. Yes, absolutely. And then you got a little bit of a cough or a something for a couple of weeks. Yes, I'd had the cough for a couple of weeks. Um, I couldn't shift it, you know, say it's for, for a few weeks. I booked an appointment with the GP and funnily enough that day, I went to the GP at 9.30 in the morning. Um, he'd said to me, he diagnosed it as a chest infection, gave me some antibiotics. Um, and then I went home, carried on working for a few more hours, but I was gradually just feeling weaker. Well, you didn't tell him when you went that morning that actually you were getting sort of tingles yeah, in your feet. that was the only thing as I drove into the GPs, the only thing I'd noticed was I just got this tiny little pins and needles sensation in my, in my feet. And I didn't even mention it to the GP. No. Um, <laughs> because it was just an irrelevant thing at the time. Um, and as the day wore on, obviously, it just became weaker and weaker. And then in the afternoon, I, I kind of felt like I needed to sleep, so I went down and lied on the sofa. Um, I woke up around five o'clock that afternoon after a few hours' sleep, and I got up and just fell over because my, my legs had just... I didn't realise at the time, but my nerves and my legs had just been attacked by my own immune system. So there's no strength in your legs at all? No, they'd gone at that point, yeah. Did you manage to get to the telephone and ring Caroline? Yes, yeah, so I then um, crawled through um, on my hands and knees to the kitchen, just pulling myself along. Thinking, what's going yeah, on? Yeah, I just had got no idea. I just thought it was... I was just very, very weak. Um, and I managed to get... I managed to reach up to the phone, which is on the kitchen shelf, and then called Caroline first. Um, she then said, all right, I'll come straight home and call the GP, obviously. So I then called an, um, an out-of-hours GP at that point, because it was probably sort of 5.30 by then. Um, and he'd, he'd said, more or less, um, take some paracetamol and rest. Mm. Um, you know, because I'd effectively said, I can't walk, but, you know, that could be just weakness. Mm -hmm. So he just probably assumed it was a, you know, bad flu or a virus of some sort. Um, so then Caroline came home. Um, I continued to get weaker and weaker. Um, later on, then that evening, um, my, mum, my mother and father came round, and my father had to help me up the stairs, it almost drag me up the stairs to get me in bed. Um, because I certainly, with no way, could I have walked or crawled up there at that point. Well, I mean, it, it got worse and worse and worse. Mm -hmm. Eventually, you, you went to sleep. Yes. Um, and in fact, it was your little boy, yes. William, who was what about three at the time? Yes. Yeah. 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 Uh, who co who coughed in the night and woke you up? Mm. That uh, alerted you to the fact that something was actually really very seriously wrong here. Mm. And I think if that probably hadn't happened, if he hadn't coughed, he hadn't woken you up, mm. then eventually that paralysis would have been. I would certainly have been dead. Yes. Because I led was, to a respiratory yeah. failure. Yes, absolutely. And you, and you I was a couple of hours from respiratory arrest. What did, so yeah. what did you what did you see when, when you when you woke up? When I, when I came back into the room after checking William, I realised that he kind of seemed to be having breathing difficulties. I mean, he got this really racking cough still as well. So, you know, I, I noticed that, although that hadn't kept me awake. And um, John could still just wh about whisper then. So when he kind of whispered and said, you know, I think we need to call the doctor again. Mm. Um, and I realised, you know, how much trouble he was in. So then obviously we called. Well, you rushed to hospital eventually. Yes, yeah, so I mean, the, the, the GP then arrived within 10 minutes of that, mm -hmm. he came really quickly um, and he called straight away, called an ambulance, within a minute, of, a second of seeing me, he just called an ambulance on a red alert straight away yeah. and then the ambulance arrived you know, very shortly and just rushed me, rushed me off. Now, the funny thing is, when you'd seen the GP in the morning, hadn't he mentioned this uh, Guillain-Barre syndrome. No way. I mean, there's no way he possibly could have. Yeah. Uh, do you mean the first doctor? I yeah, the first. Perhaps who? Because who, somebody mentioned it and then dismissed oh, that it was, straight away. Yeah, that was the that one was at uh, eight o'clock. Eight o'clock in the evening. There yeah. was another doctor in between. Mm. Yeah, that was, I, by that point, I was yeah in bed and. Um, oh, he came out to check you, didn't he? Yeah. 
at uh -huh. 8 o'clock as well. OK, but still nothing happened. He kind of, yeah, he just mentioned it, but just kind of questioned it, but thought, I think you know, with, with a lot of um, cases of GBS, they can be quite slow anyway. Mm. So even though, I mean, mine was a particularly rapid, nasty case, yes. yeah, and very rapid, it can take, you know, a week or two to, to progress mm. to anything that might, where you might need to go into hospital. But this was such a short space of time. Absolutely. Within, within no time at all, mm. you are utterly paralysed. Yes. Yep. Now, you, you one of those rare people who has been in the situation of being completely paralysed and only being able to communicate with their eyes, having been able-bodied and then mm. come out of it mm. to a mostly perfect degree yes. um, and, and back to what you were before. Yep. So what is it? what was it like for you to, to, to end up communicating just by blinking? Mm. A lot of that period, those first few weeks, I mean, it took me, once I got into hospital, it took me another week before I could even blink my eyes because I couldn't even move them for a little while. Oh, but your mind was still yeah, working? Yeah, well, well, yeah, I mean, obviously I was, I was giving, given pain-killing drugs and all sorts. Um, so there were drug. I was given drugs, but also I was kind of drifting between this fantasy hallucinations um, and unfortunately, I'd read a couple of like, Dan Brown books before I went in, and <laughs> they, I was kind of, had, I was really, I had all these religious oh, no. hallucinations and dreams. <laughs> You're I thought in I was angels in Rome. and demons. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I was in Rome. I was in the Vatican City, and oh, um, it just that. All oh, that's all I remember from those first few weeks. Absolute nothing of reality. Oh, you were on a life support machine for over four weeks. You yes. You have a tracheotomy scar yes, here yeah. that was breathing for that's you. Right. Yep. Um, when you got back onto the respiratory ward, they, they said that the, the only thing we want you to do now is get to breathe on your own. Mm. And to, to start in October, you mm -hmm. didn't want to see the children because no. you didn't want the children to see you in this very yeah, fragile not, I, I state. Was being, I was being intravenously fed and I had the ventilator as well. Oh. And then, you know, obviously all my muscles had evaporated. How tall all. are you? Six just foot? under six foot, yep. You went down to six stone. Yes, uh, about six stone, yeah, just over six stone. So you didn't see the children, I think, till the end of January, so that's, mm -hmm. that's about right. four months. Mm -hmm. You're wild with worry, I should think, yes. Caroline, and the doctors are saying, well, we don't quite know how much of this you're going to get back. Mm. But y this is two and a half years on, and you worked hard on the physio, mm -hmm. um, you you've really done as much as you possibly can, and, and how good are you now? Um, I still have some residual nerve damage in my feet. I mean, I have to have special silicon ankle supports um, to, to, be able to enable me to walk properly because my kind of my dorsiflex which is your up movement on the foot is very very weak and um, so um, I, I, if I didn't have them I'd sort of trip over my feet as I walked effectively. So no running, no football? No absolutely not. No. You can do table tennis though? Yes I've taken up table tennis instead now. Yeah. So. <laughs> glasses, you've got uh, glasses now. Yes um, I did have glasses, these are just I was short-sighted before the game the GBS but um, I did, unfortunately, it's very rare with GBS cases, but I did get some optic nerve damage as well, um, especially in my right eye, um, which is just a slight deterioration. In, it's like almost watching a bad TV picture. Um, and then my hands, um, I don't know you can see, they're just slightly thin. There's some yeah. sort of residual nerve is damage. Is that shaky there well. from nerves, or is it <laughs> <laughs> it's you? That's probably because I'm on live TV, yeah, <laughs> unfortunately. <that's right. laughs> they're not, not normally shaky. Not only, uh, not only did you... I mean, you're, you're saying that now you've got to a stage in your life, you've got a new baby due yes. in about a week and a half. <laughs> yes. Yes. Yeah. And okay. so, you've, you, you know, this is, this is a chapter you are about to close, because not only the sort of the, 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 the physical problems there were also uh, emotional problems as well it got, it got you down mm. it got you oh absolutely understandable. yeah I mean there was all the I mean one of the hardest things emotionally at the start was I'd never not seen the children for more than a one been away from them for more than one night to yes. suddenly not see them for three months just kind of yeah. was destroying me but also it was motivating me yes, to get out quick I know I was desperate to get out of hospital yeah. I remember saying to the physios you know every day I was going what do, what exactly do I need to do to get out of here and then, but then when I got out, you know, you become partially almost institutionalised mm, to yes, the hospital. I've been there three and a half months. So now I was longing to get out. I get out and then suddenly I'm thinking, oh, I really miss the hospital bits of it. And, mm. I, and I used to really enjoy going back for my physio sessions. Yes. Chris, what, what, what is it and what should you look out for? OK. Well, gain barrier syndrome um, um, usually comes on after infection. Over 50% of the cases are after an infection. Some can occur after surgery, some can occur after vaccination. And, and basically what it is, I mean, we don't know exactly what's going on, but it seems to be an overreaction of the body's immune system where it starts attacking its own nerve fibres. So you know, what um, Jonathan was experiencing there was mm. a, an ascending um, tingling and ascending weakness. So if you've had an infection in the past one to three weeks, 
and you're getting symptoms of tingling in the feet or an ascending weakness coming up. I mean, he's on his hands and knees very quickly mm. indeed. Can then, it be stopped if you spotted that? Well, the earlier you're caught, the better. Yeah. Whatever stage you're at, of course, it can be mild to severe, and Jonathan was very severe. Um, it's a medical emergency, whatever level it's at, because if it hits the muscles of breathing, mm. ventilation, mm. intensive care unit, etc., etc., you know all about that. So if any of those symptoms, tingling, weakness, coming up the legs, affecting the hands or arms, call the doctor, call 999. It's a medical emergency. Mm. Gosh, well, thank you. You've done very well. Good luck with this baby. Thank you. Number three. <laughs> Here's to a happy, healthy future. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Uh, for more details on Guillain Barre syndrome, then please visit our website, itv.com slash this morning. After the break, we've got all the latest royal gossip. <laughs> Be coast of the 